Good morning and welcome. We have been experiencing technical difficulties, so do not adjust your set. It, we, will get, we will be finished. I will begin with acknowledgement of the land. The land on which this building and all our buildings sit is land that has been walked on, hunted on, and lived on for thousands of years. It is with humility and respect that we give thanks for the spaces we occupy where we are in touch with Creator who made it and who made us. May our worship honor the relationships that are celebrated and invited here along with the promises of Treaty 4. And may we always remember the story of this land, the people who live here, and the call to live in peace and friendship with respect and thanksgiving. And so okay, we, a warm welcome to, is extended to all in our virtual worship, especially those who are worshiping with us for the first time, if there are any, and for those who have returned after a while. See, in the face, in the world, in this world of differences, we, cha we are challenged to see the sacred in many faces and many traditions. And so let us celebrate the richness and diversity of life. This morning, okay, my name is Fassi Von Terry, and I served in Milestone Rolo, the Sulain Pastoral Charge, newly retired. And um, I am happy to be here with you this morning. Number one, it's February, Black History Month, as a black person. And I had to get this honor to share some history with you and also both for both Canada and our church. I do hope that um, you will share this part of my history with me as we journey together to bring about God's kingdom here in Westminster United Church and in each one of us. I will be sharing those in my reflection or my message to you. So let us begin with our introit, the chorus of I am the light of the world. Okay. I invite you at home, if you have a candle beside you, to light it with us. O oh, Creator God, may the flame of this candle warm our hearts as we celebrate our differences in the United Church of Canada, of thick and thick, thin lips, of kinky, straight and curly hair, of broad and narrow noses, and a variety of skin colors. We have joys of welcome, justice, and peace. You call us to be salt and light, and so we will in the warmth of your embrace. Amen. And we continue with our call to worship. God, our strength and our redeemer, Give us courage we need to truly see one another. <clears throat> Give us the determination to overcome the daunting challenges of racism. Give us the strength to acknowledge the painful realities of history. Give us the hope to sustain us for a better day we know is coming. Give us the joy to enliven in our hearts that we may celebrate together. God. You are our strength and our redeemer. Our ever-present help, let everything that has breath, breath praise you. Praise you. 
And we'll continue praising with uh, Voices United 593. We will sing the first the refrain through once. They will, then we will sing the hymn, the words, and then at the end, we will sing the refrain. repeat it together. Eternal One, we hear the cries of our neighbors near and far, and our hearts reach out to them. We are thankful for your promise of hope, and we are thankful for Jesus' love for you, which he demonstrated on the cross. Through this love, we get not only a glimpse of you, but we also receive the good news. Strengthen our faith. Help us to see each other through your eyes so that we will be able to experience you in more ways than one. As we worship you this day, may we be open and sensitive to each other's needs and presence, recognizing we are all your children. This is our prayer. Amen. Hello, everybody. Today, one of our Bible stories talks about the importance of not judging others by their appearance. In the story, it talks about how someone who looks very rich and has lots of nice things is often treated better than someone who looks maybe a little poor and doesn't have as many nice things. There is often no good reason for this other than what society or the world around us has taught. There is no real reason that the rich person should be treated better than the poor one. In fact, if we show favoritism or preference to the rich person, we may find out that they aren't nearly as kind or fun to be around as the poor person we decided to ignore. A line that is mentioned in today's Bible reading is, Love your neighbor as yourself. Do you know what that means? It means that when you see the people around you, like your siblings or your neighbor, or even just some random person you happen to run into at school, you should treat them with as much respect and care as if you ran into yourself. How would you want to be treated by someone? Do you want to be treated meanly with a couple of insults thrown in for good measure? Or would you rather be treated with kindness and respect? I know which one I would choose. It can be really difficult to keep that kind of attitude up all the time. We all have a bad day every so often. But the important thing to remember is that even if you slip 
and you aren't as kind as you should be. Or maybe you judge someone for how they look. You can usually go back and apologize or treat them better when you see them again. It's important to notice when we make mistakes and try and correct them wherever possible. So this week, when you go out and you see people, even if the only people you see are your family, try and remember what we talked about today. Don't judge people by how they look, love others as you would love yourself, and don't forget to apologize if you make a mistake. Have a good week. Dear God, you understand every person, both the good ones and the bad ones. You call us your salt and light of the world. Please sort us out, make bad people good and good people nice, and use us all. In your name we pray. Amen. It is so simple. Make a sandwich for the hungry, open our ears to the crying child, and change unjust laws. This is how we are called to worship God. How foolish we are when we choose not to listen to such wisdom. So let's put aside the masks we wear in front of the world and be honest as we confess how we have not answered this call. I confess, O oh God, that our world is not yet the world you have called us to create. There is strife and prejudice among us. For my part, O oh God, I ask your forgiveness. For the times I have heard bigotry and remained silent, forgive me, O oh God. For the times I have spoken bigotry, when I should have remained silent. Forgive, Forgive me, O oh God. I want to follow you and live in a world that honors your commandment to love one another as we love ourselves. Strengthen me to live this commandment today and always. Amen. Amen. And so it begins with God and ends with God. That love which we can create, renew, restore. God loves you and forgives you. Now you are forgiven. Our prayer hymn. Spirit open our heart, the chorus only. Spirit open my heart to the joy and pain of living as you love me I love in receiving and in giving Spirit open my heart We are people of all ages who have our joys and our concerns. And so at this time, we will offer the prayers of the people and we'll follow it with the Abba prayer. May we be the spice in a world content with ordinariness, the zest that stings our minds focused only on themselves, the tartness that awakens moths we speak only cliches. Let us be the torch or the flashlight that shows the shadowed the way out of their troubles. The nightlight which comforts the fearful. The lighthouse with which warns of danger we, are, we all face. Even as we offer up prayers for all 
who need to feel the saltiness of God's tears and the light of grace that we can offer. Let us just be silent in our own prayers for a moment. We bring our prayers to you, O oh God. We bring our hurts. We bring our silent prayers. We bring our concerns. We ask that as we bring them before you, you will hold them in front of us, reminding us who we are and whose we are and that we are put here to make a difference in your world. Then, may all who are searching find that community, not necessarily on a hill, but in all the ordinary places and people around them, as we have done in you. Amen. So let us pray together the Abba Father prayer. God, heart of the world, revealed through every aspect of creation, understood through all awareness. May we honor the holiness of creation and act accordingly so that your love is reflected in the way we live. May we always be thankful for the food we eat and the friends we have. May we forgive those who transgress against us and be forgiven for our own. In the freedom of love, may we live as your heart beat and not be compromised by hesitation. Through, through our freedom, may your justice be seen and heard and experienced forever and ever. Amen. Lord, hear our prayers love answer Amen. and so we are as we recognize our offerings as a symbol of our decision to be co-creators of God in a safer and more inclusive world together in our giving may our hearts be opened our hands unclenched our ears unclogged and our eyes opened that we may feel and touch and taste and see the breath and play of creativity God in our midst amen James 2, verses 1 to 10. My brothers and sisters, I know you've heard this before, but stop playing favorites. Do not try to blend the genuine faith of our glorious Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, with your silly pretentiousness. If an affluent gentleman enters your gathering wearing the finest clothes and priceless jewelry, don't trip over each other trying to welcome him. And if a penniless bum crawls in with his shabby clothes and a stench fills the room, don't look away or pretend you didn't notice. Offer him a seat up front next to you. If you tell the wealthy man, come sit by me, there's plenty of room, but tell the vagrant, oh, these seats are saved, go over there, then you'll be judging God's children out of evil motives. My dear brothers and sisters, listen. God has picked the poor of this world to become unfathomably rich in faith and ultimately to inherit the kingdom, which he has pledged to those who loved him. By favoring the rich, you have mocked the poor. And correct me if I'm wrong, 
but isn't it the rich who step on you while climbing the ladder of success? And isn't it the rich who take advantage of you and drag you into court? And aren't they the ones mocking the noble name of our God, the one calling us? We are often mesmerized by the rich and powerful and beautiful people of the world. We dream of associating with them, but when we focus our attention on the fashionable people of this world, it is often at the expense of those who need it the most. Ignoring the needy and favoring the wealthy is completely contrary to the example Jesus modeled for us while walking on earth. God often chooses those who are poor, the poorest materially to be the richest spiritually. We should welcome everyone equally into God's kingdom, even if it means upsetting boundaries like class and race. This rule is simple. We should treat others in the same way we want to be treated. God does not play favorites, and neither should we. Remember his call and live by the royal law found in scripture. Love others as you love yourself. You'll be doing very well if you can get this down. But if you show favoritism, paying attention to those who can help you in some way while ignoring those who seem to need all the help, you'll be sinning and condemned by the law. For if a person could keep all of the laws and yet break just one, it would be like breaking them all. Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 to 20. You can do what God tells you if you want to. Sticking to the right track is a simple matter of choice. God has laid out the options in front of you. Stick your hand in the fire or in the water. You choose. Every person is offered the same alternatives, life or death, and whichever you choose is what you get. The wisdom of the Lord is incredible. The power of the Lord is enormous. The eyes of the Lord don't miss a thing. The Lord keeps a close watch on all who respect him. Whatever people are up to, the Lord knows about it. No one is under God's orders to do the wrong thing by others. The Lord has not given the nod to corruption of any kind. Commit yourself to me, the Lord your God, in love and loyalty. Obey what I say and stick with me, because that is the surefire recipe for a long and satisfying life in the land that I promised to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Lord, open our understanding by the power of the Holy Spirit. That as the word is proclaimed, we may receive holy wisdom. Amen. So, history is made up of good and bad experiences, and both must be recognized. It is when we recognize the unpleasant things of the past and do something about them that we appreciate just how far we have come as a society and how much more work is there to be done. It's ma it makes even more significant the things that are to be celebrated. Usually, I like to speak, start with my reflection with something funny. I had a, um, a joke for you, and then I heard something as I was doing, I was um, doing a racial justice workshop this past week. And this, this, this person was a kindergarten teacher, and he had some kids <laughs> in, in his class. And one day, this six-year-old, he was sharing that, came in and said, there was actually, let me back up, there was one black child in the class who was the best friend of this little boy. So anyway, he came in and he said to the teacher, he said, teacher, we just shouldn't have black people in our school. And to that, the teacher responded, but your friend is, um, is black. No, he said, he's not, my, he's not black, he's my friend. And that brought to me the scripture verse that says, unless we become as little children, the innocent of that. He didn't see a black friend, person, he saw it. But then again, you knew exactly where that came from, right? If, because he didn't understand it, he just repeated it because he heard it at home. And so we have to be so careful when what we say and how we, we act. 
And so, we pray, O oh God, to open our hearts to your call and your will for our lives, Holy One, this day and always. Amen. So as I mentioned to you before, I am going to just give you a brief history um, as, as, uh, about uh, in recognition uh, of Black History Month. So in the 1600s, slavery existed in Canada as it existed in colonies throughout the world. The first documented slave in Canada was named by their master, Oliver Lejeune, in 1628. However, there are reports of slave ships arriving in the early 1600s. Many of the documented slaves in Canada were owned by clergy. It was not until the late 1700s that talks of abolishing slavery started in Upper Canada. So while auction blocks were being built to sell people, the church sang, a mighty fortress is our God. Voices United 262. This, in the 1700s, during the late 1700s, promises of freedom and land in exchange for British loyalty brought many freed blacks to Nova Scotia. Although no longer slaves, the black community was oppressed and denied basic civil and human rights. As a result, there was a mini exodus in the late 1700s, when black loyalists and black refugees, the Maroons, took to the, to up the offer to resettle in Sierra, Sierra Leone. Although the church often attempted to preach the thin black Bible to black people, focusing on servitude and honoring your master, the power of the gospel shined through the hymns of Isaac Watts and the Wesleyans offering hope and empowerment to an enslaved people. One such hymn is Love Divine and the words Come Almighty to deliver, let us all your grace receive. Suddenly return and never, never more the temple sleeve. The irony of singing, come almighty to deliver, let us all your grace receive, and then reading such passages as James 2, with both oppressor and oppressed, was not lost. Which is why the black church responded with, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. I want to be more loving. I want to be more holy. And I want to be like Jesus in my heart. In the early 1800s, Canada and the northern part of the United States gained a reputation for being a safe haven for the enslaved. Seeking freedom, many enslaved peoples traveled secretly to Canada through a concealed network known as the Underground Railroad. Many churches and Quaker meeting houses became stations on the route to freedom. There is much mythology on how people communicated with each other between these stations. And since music and spiritual, spirituals were often used in black communities to counter the theologies being preached, music seemed to be the perfect way to convey messages of freedom, as music was and remains a primary form of communication. And so they sang, my Lord, what a morning when the stars begin to fall. And also hymns like, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. And that meant you got to keep down and the chariots are going to, they thought, of course, the theology is going up to heaven, but it was the, the chariots, meaning the railroad. 
and we have other hymns to the Negro spirituals that came out of that. Long after slavery was abolished in 1833 in the British Empire and 1865 in the United States, life remained difficult for black people across North America. In the 1950s and 60s, the right, the fight for civil rights intensified. Several iconic moments included Viola Desmond refusing to sit in the black section only at the movie theater in New Glasgow, Nova Scotia. Rosa Parks refusing to sit at the back of the bus in Montgomery, Alabama. The three civil rights marches from Selma to Montgomery and the demolition of Africville in Halifax, Nova Scotia that resulted in the forced relocation of the historic black community. Many churches joined in the movement, while many others went about their daily business warning activists to slow down and to temper their voices. When society actively put restriction on the rights of black peoples, you cannot sit here. You cannot march there. You cannot do this. The church sang, I'm going to live so God can use me. In the spring of 1941, 20 students graduated from Emmanuel College in Toronto. Among them was 29-year-old Wilbur Howard, the school's first black graduate. At that time, graduates interested in ministry had to complete a mandatory three-year placement called settlement in a congregation. With degrees in hand, Wilbur began his search, but it took him 24 years to get a call despite the national shortage of ministers. In 1965, he finally got a call to team ministry in Ottawa's Dominion Chalmers United at the age of 53. Can you imagine? From 29 years old to 53 years old, that, went, that is when he was called. And five years later, he went on to lead a church of his own, Emmanuel United. And then in 1974, was elected moderator of the United Church of Canada for a three-year term. Over 50 years later, the recent deaths of Michael Brown, Eric Garner, Trevon Martin, and many others, the shootings in Montreal at our Muslim brothers and sisters have tragically reminded us that the fight for equal, equal rights and justice is far from over. Ra racial profiling continues to affect every aspect of society, from childcare to educational and employment opportunities. It is clear that the fight for racial equality continues. What will our church's response be to the current reality of black and other marginalized people in our society? Our scripture in Deuteronomy reminds us that well, what you can do what God tells you to do if you want to, or you can go your own way. The choice is yours. The wisdom of God, of the Lord, is incredible. And so, Deuteronomy 20. Deuteronomy 30, 20 says, Commit yourself to me, the Lord your God, in love and loyalty. Obey what I say and stick with me, because that is the surefire recipe for a long and satisfying life 
in the land that I promised to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So what does all this mean to us? Commit yourself to me, the Lord says. We've heard the history. We've heard the word. And we have a choice to make. And the wise choice, as the Deuteronomy passage tells us, is to commit ourselves to God. And that's the start. Then commit ourselves to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And who's our neighbor? It's not just next door. Choose you this day whom you will serve. And as you do, remember, God is a good God to all, not just to the elite or the chosen few. Abraham Lincoln once said, the only way to put an end to hatred, racism, discrimination, and so on, is to start with kindness. Plant those seeds of kindness wherever they will grow, and you, we will be amazed the beautiful garden we will produce. May we seek God's guidance as we search our hearts to make the wisest choice, and may we be obedient to the choice. God is good all the time. Let us pray. We come with many names, terms of endearment that we cherish, and labels that we seek to one day destroy. But you call us by one name, O oh God. You call us beloved. We remember your healing acts of salvation. We remember how you gathered the dislocated and dispersed blacks, black peoples in Nova Scotia to build communities and relearn cultures that were torn away. We remember the Maroons who, with their own hands, built a mighty fortress on a hill. We remember Viola Desmond, Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, Lincoln Alexander, Michel Jean, Wilbur Howard, and all the, and other heroes and sheroes of the faith who helped to blaze the trail and are still working for justice, freedom, and equality for all. For our way forward, reconciling God, we pray. Open us to the stories of our nation's past. Open our hearts so that they can listen, learn, and grieve. We pray for each of us and for those who will lead this journey in our homes, our community of faith, in our communities, and our nation. May healing come. Amen. Before we sing our closing hymn, I would like to share a hymn with you. It's entitled, um, Lift Every Voice and Sing, and it's dubbed the Black, Black National Anthem. If nothing, I need you to listen to the words. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Wing with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise, oh yes, the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. 
Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in their days when hope on a bone had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not a weary feet come to the place for which our fathers died. We have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood and the slaughter. Out from a gloomy past till now we stand at last where the white gleam of a bright star is cast. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us this far on our way, Thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee, Lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God. Think of the kindness you wish others would show you and do the same for them. It's a daunting goal, but one that I am in some way grateful for. A part, and part of what makes me grateful is my understanding that I do not need to be perfect to be worthy of God's love. Amen. Our closing hymn, We Are Pilgrims on a Journey.
Go now to seek a place of a beloved community where all people are known and acknowledged, where partners and allies can be found, where all people work toward love, fairness, and understanding. Go with the hope of Jesus and the words of Martin Luther King that this community is possible and all you, it needs is you. Go with celebration in your hearts for black peoples. Go now in peace. Amen. end of this thing and it's a quote by Nikia and she's age six and it says if you want to learn to love better you should start with a friend who you hate <laughs> so we need a few million more of Nikias on this planet go with God amen our service is now ended <laughs>